our last section of chapter three is 3.7, where we're going to cover average rates of change, secant lines, and difference quotients. So I'm going to draw an arbitrary graph of a function. Well, it's not quite arbitrary, but it's going to look something like our y equals x squared. The average rate of change of a function, I pick, I want to know the rate of change. Let me get a different color here to make it stand out. I want to know the rate of change of the function. I'm going to call this x equals a. I'm going to call that x equals b. This value right here is going to be f of a. This value over here is going to be f of b. The, um, I'm going to call it the average rate of change is going to be the change in my y values over the change in my x values. Okay. And my y value change is f of b minus f of a. My x values are b and a. And this equation is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Your average rate of change is the slope of the secant line. And the secant line is the line that crosses that curve at the two points of interest. So the average rate of change is actually giving me the slope of the secant line. Um, so let's do an example here. If I have a function, um, h equals negative 16 t squared plus 50 t. I want to find the average rate of change from t equals 1 to t equals 3. Okay? So I need to find my f of 3. I need to find my f of 1. So f of 3. I'm going to put a 3 into that function. And this is where I would definitely use a calculator. So I have negative 16 times 9. Uh, 150 minus 144 is 6. My f of 1 is just going to be negative 16 plus 50, which is 34. So my rate average rate of change is going to be f of b, which is f of 3, 6 minus 34 over 3 minus 1, which is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check with a calculator. I think it's negative 28. 6 minus 34, yep. Negative 28 over 2 is negative 14. And they said that this was in feet and seconds. So this is negative 14 feet per second. That means it's average rate of change. It's going down at a rate of 14 feet per second on average. So that's how you would use the formula to calculate the average rate of change. Now what I want to do is I want to go over some notation. Um, just so we understand what different things mean. The change in F over the change of X. I'm going to put a vertical line. And I'm going to put a bracket. A comma B. 
This means the average change of f of x with respect to x. The vertical bar means evaluated. Evaluated between a and b. is equal to that formula, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. That vertical bar means evaluated, and then in brackets, we put the way we evaluate it between. Another way you may see that, it may you may see it written as a to b that way. Okay, I want you to get start getting used to some of that notation. So one special average uh, rate of change thing we have is called the difference quotient. Um, and the difference quotient is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay. I'm going to show you where that comes from. I'm going to take a function. I'm going to call this distance, I'm going to call this point I'm going to go h units to the right. If I go h units to the right, that makes this point x plus h. This y value is going to be f of x. This y value up here is f of x plus h. Okay, well, let's just do our generic f of b, we've got it, f of a, and then b minus a, that's the x plus h minus x, which just gives me the h. So that's where the difference quotient comes from. Um, we're going to calculate difference quotients of two different problems. I'm going to do a linear, then I'm going to do a squared, and that'll be it for this lesson. So I want to find the difference quotient of f of x equals 3x minus 7. So the first thing I need is I need an f of x plus h. I have my f of x, which is right here. I need an f of x plus h. f of x plus h means to rewrite this function, except where there's an x, put parentheses. And inside the parentheses, put an x plus h. Now I'm going to simplify this. I'm going to distribute. I'm going to get 3x plus 3h minus 7. Now I'm going to stick this into my difference quotient problem. So I'm going to have f of x plus h, which is 3x plus 3h minus 7, minus f of x which is 3x minus 7, all over h. Now I'm going to simplify this. 3x minus 3x is 0. Negative 7 minus a negative 7 is 0. So I'm now left with 3h over h. 
which is three. Okay. So anytime I want you to do when asking to find the difference quotient, I want you to first find out what f of x plus h is, then write the formula, figure out what cancels, and then simplify. To do one that's a little messier. I want to find the difference quotient of f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 2. And the difference quotient is f of x plus h minus f of x. all over h. So again, the first step is to find f of x plus h, which means to write the original function, except where there's an x, put parentheses, everywhere there's an x, and inside the parentheses, I'm putting x plus h. Then I am going to square this, which is x squared, plus 2xh plus h squared minus 5x minus 5h plus 2. Okay, so now I'm going to write my difference quotient, which is something over h, which is going to be this x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 5x minus 5h plus 2. Now I'm going to subtract f of x. So I'm going to get minus x squared plus 5x minus 2. Now I'm going to simplify x squared and negative x squared cancel. 5x and minus 5x cancel. Negative 2 and 2 cancel. If you did it correctly, every term left should have an h in it. I have 2xh plus h squared minus 5h all over h. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel an H out of everything. My answer is going to be 2X plus H minus 5. That would be the final answer. Okay. Um, that's it. That's it for Chapter 3. Um, you have... Looks like six homework questions. Let me just skim through those really quick. Um, that one, yep. Yeah. Number four, you're going to be reading the values off of the graph for your f of b and f of a, which isn't too bad. Um, and when you do number, let's see, eight, straight forward. In. Okay. Um, I'm going to revise it when I type it into Google Classroom. I wrote 10. 10 has a lot of parts. I'm not going to have you do all of them. I'm going to want you to do B. C. And H only. Okay, so I'm going to revise that um, when I put it up into Google Classroom. So there we go.